Hi, and welcome to this webcast on LabVIEW scripting. My name's Rob Wareham, and I'm an Applications Engineer for National Instruments, UK and Ireland. We can determine the power of LabVIEW scripting by looking at what we can actually achieve with it. We can inspect or modify existing code, generate new code, place down new controls or indicators, and also inspect and modify the connector pane. You can download the scripting VIs from ni.com forward slash labs or for 2011 onwards you can activate the feature within LabVIEW via Tools, Options and VI Server. So let's start having a look at scripting. So scripting is exposed to you in much the same way as with VI Server in that you obtain a reference to something and act upon that by utilizing methods and properties. And here you can see that scripting simply exposes these new methods and new properties from the reference type that you connect to it. So let's start taking a look at a number of functions that we use to script within LabVIEW. The new VI function basically allows you to create a brand new blank VI to start working with from your LabVIEW script. When using the new VI function, we set the type of VI that we want to create for the remainder of our script. The reference out of the function will then dictate the actual types of methods and properties that we have access to. Another fundamental function is to create a new object on your VI, allowing you to choose the type of object either from built-in controls or functions within LabVIEW, or to provide a path to the function to sub-VIs or user controls that you've already created. When creating a new object, just like when you created a new VI, the object class sets the object reference type. The owner refnum sets where the object is going to be created, be it to a destination VI, a front panel, or a block diagram. Another useful feature within LabVIEW scripting is the ability to communicate directly with the connector pane. So here you can see we are obtaining a reference to our connector pane of our LabVIEW VI. This then allows us to use an invoke node to communicate with our connector pane and to assign a controls reference to a particular terminal index. This terminal index is then used to assign the control to a particular location on the connector pane. When you install or activate LabVIEW scripting on your PC, the connector pane pattern reference VI is automatically installed into your example finder for reference. Now, before we go into more detail on the additional functions that are available within LabVIEW scripting, it's important that we first look at how scripting views a pre-existing VI and its functionality. So first let's consider a fairly standard VI. So here we have a front panel with a control and an indicator. And within our block diagram, we're making use of a structure, in this case a for loop. We have our controls and indicators also shown within our block diagram. We have our shift registers within our structure and also some arithmetic functions. For a long time we've been able to obtain a VI server reference to a front panel. But now that you have LabVIEW scripting installed or enabled you can now obtain a reference to your VI's block diagram as well. You've also been able to obtain a reference to controls and indicators on your front panel for quite some time within LabVIEW. But again, now that you have LabVIEW scripting installed and enabled, you're able to ask those controls for a reference to their associated terminals on the block diagram. 
The reverse is also true in that you can also ask those controls or indicators that exist on your block diagram for a reference to their front panel objects. In addition to this, you can also ask the block diagram for references to all of the objects that it owns. Because all the references that we can now talk to are different, for example we have some numeric functions, we also have a structure in the case of our for loop, it's therefore very important that VI scripting is very generic in the way that it exposes those references. So this brings us on to the type hierarchy. Much like any reference in LabVIEW, you can specify its type. In this example, we're looking at the G object type, which inherits from the generic type. We can then use this reference to set a particular property or a particular method that's related to its base type. You can also obtain a specific object type. So in this example, we're merely obtaining references to nodes within our block diagram rather than every object that exists within it, as we did in the previous example. However, notice that we don't have a reference to the arithmetic node within the for loop in this instance. The reason for this is because the arithmetic node is actually owned by the for loop rather than the block diagram as a whole. So it's important to note that structures such as while loops or for loops are classed as individual nodes that contain other pieces of code separate to the block diagram. Therefore, we consider this node to be nested. It's still accessible, but only via another node on the block diagram. Nodes themselves connect to each other through wires, and these in turn are connected via terminals. Now, as you can see, again, VI scripting allows you to place down a reference of type node which then exposes the terminal references for you to then work with. Structures on the other hand are much more complex. They contain tunnels which act as a bridge between the outer block diagram and the inner diagram of your actual loop structure. But again, as you can see, VI scripting gives you the option of placing down a reference of type for loop and exposing the references of these tunnels. Each tunnel in this case contains an outer terminal that's visible to the block diagram as a whole and an inner terminal that's visible to each block diagram within the node, in this case our for loop. So again we can take a reference of type tunnel and we can expose the references of the outside terminals and the inside terminals. So now that we better understand how LabVIEW scripting interacts with a pre-existing VI, let's take a look at some more functions. The OpenVI object reference basically allows you to simplify the way you reference your nodes on your block diagram. Instead of needing to work your way through all of the reference levels, you can simply communicate to the node via its label. So let's take a look at an example of this. Here you can see that we're moving through each layer to obtain a reference to a node. So we're starting off at the diagram reference layer. We're getting a reference to all objects within that diagram. We're then looking inside to find a for loop. And then within that for loop, we're grabbing all of the nodes, indexing a particular node, just to work with a node of type icon. Now, this is a fairly simple requirement, but as you can see, it can lead to quite a complex script. 
However, if we utilize the OpenVI object reference, you can see that we can drastically reduce the complexity of the script and also improve its readability. So again, we can see we're taking a reference to our diagram. We're then looking for our for loop. Then within that for loop diagram, we're looking for a particular node called compound arithmetic, which we can then work with. You can also automate the wiring by utilizing LabVIEW scripting. By obtaining the references of two terminals, you can automatically connect these together by using the invoke node, connect wire. If you wish to connect a terminal to multiple terminals on a node, you can simply connect a node reference to the wire source of the connect wire invoke node. The opposite is also true in that a node also has a method that allows you to wire a terminal source to it. You can then supply this invoke node with a 2D array of type string. This contains the labels of the terminal from your wire source and the terminal from the node that you're currently working with to wire the two together automatically. Another notable function is the auto root setting. If you select auto root to be true, then it will automatically wire around structures. Whereas if you leave this as false, it will wire behind structures, which could decrease readability of your VI. And finally, we'll take a look at the new VI from template. This allows you to copy a template to then work from for the remainder of your LabVIEW code. Now this is particularly powerful if you have a set of coding standards that you know that you wish to enforce regardless of what the sub-VI will perform. So commonly this is making use of error terminals and case structures throughout all of your sub-VIs to enforce data flow and show good coding standards.